So I had this cedar tree on my property. It's the type of cedar tree that smells nice, the kind you put in the closet to keep the moths away. I think it's a western red cedar, maybe, or Spanish cedar. I'm not quite sure. But it was broken. It was cracked, literally cracked all the way, like kind of part halfway up. And uh, so I thought maybe I could use the very bottom as a, as a stump and maybe make the stump into a seat. But as soon as I cut it, I realized the crack goes all the way through to the very bottom. And I pull it out and I go, let me go back and take a look and see what else I could take out of this tree. And uh, so here you see me taking part of the crack. And you can see it's all weathered. The, the split was, was, it was split for many years. The wind would blow and the tree would creak because of the crack. I cut it down about a month ago. And uh, once I finally look at the stump, I realize it's completely rotted anyway, so I couldn't do much with that stump. And so uh, I look back at the long piece, and um, I bring it to the shop. And I start to think about what I could do with it. And uh, I realize, well, maybe at least I'll flatten it. And so I start chopping into it, and I see how beautiful the redwood is underneath it. It's this, this red, beautiful cedar. Not to mention, it smells really beautiful as well. It's the same type of cedar you would put in a closet, again, to keep the moths away. Or like you might smell in a hamster cage. So I start chopping it, and I realize uh, it's a good opportunity for me to use the flattening jig. Uh, actually, uh, fine woodworking featured a flattening jig. Uh, that Nick Offerman often uses to flatten big slabs. And uh, I realized that I want to get this at least somewhat level before I decide to use the flattening jig. So that's what I'm using my hatchet that I made in a previous video. I actually made the hatchet handle. The head was existing. And uh, I just continue to flatten it. It's actually quite satisfying to chop the wood like that in both directions. It's kind of how you hand hewn a beam as you can chop in one direction and then you go against the grain in the other direction and uh, the chunks just literally fly away. So now I got it down to a pretty good level and I put these rails on. These rails are about seven inches high and I've screwed the log to the table in a couple of key spots and now there's my carriage. That carriage is going to carry the router and there's the router and that router has a one and an eighth inch bit on it and there I'm just testing it. This is a uh, late one night and then I'm going to cross dissolve into the next morning where I'm wearing a different shirt. So there's the next morning and my intern Matt is holding my vacuum and as he put it it's like trying to sweep up during a ticker tape parade. <laughs> there's just really almost no way to control the, the chips that fly off. Not to mention it smelled really really good. And then David reminded me we had this brand new bit which was much sharper so he threw it on the table. <laughs> and brought it to my attention, so I changed a bit. Now the carriage was a little, uh, was, was uh, rubbing on the log, so I had to take some more down. I'm testing it. And uh, yeah, so that's why I just I didn't realize the, the carriage would hit that. And so here I go. Uh, this was the first pass, which took the most material away. So I'm going slow back and forth. And I, I hit a knot right there. And uh, it's kind of satisfying. It's like a CNC machine when it starts to get really quick when it gets to a small cut right there. And uh, I decided to try and leave the log as natural as possible. And uh, the more I dig into this, I realize what I'm going to do with this is make it a floating shelf. It wasn't my very first idea. And now that's, a, that's actually a cool shot with the new GoPro session. I had it just hot glued up underneath the carriage. I had it wrapped with gaffer's tape and then I hot glued the gaffer's tape to the carriage. And now here we go with sanding it. That's my hands. And I'm sanding it with 80 grit. I'm taking it down through the grits. And then uh, I let my intern, Alan, take over the sander. And I'm kind of guiding him while he's sanding. So that's me still. And now you see Alan. There's Alan's hands. And uh, so we go from 80 to 120 to 220. And then uh, we start getting into the 400 grits. And we work it all the way up to what's 4,000. Now that's a 4,000 grit, absolutely no finish, and we still have a nice, beautiful shine. So there's no finish. I was afraid to put a finish on it because I didn't want it to kill the smell, that beautiful smell that that cedar put out. These are old brackets that I didn't need anymore. I just needed that three-quarter inch steel rod. So now here I'm making a jig. This is a jig for two 
reasons I need this jig. I need to drill holes parallel on the table into the log. This is going to be how I fasten it to a wall. It's going to be a floating shelf, I've decided. And uh, so there I use a 2x4. Now I'm using a, an auger bit and a drill press, which is kind of dangerous, so that's why I'm kind of using it at a high speed. The high speed keeps it from screwing in. And there's a steel chunk I use to kind of transfer my, my clamping to the table there. And now that I have my holes pathway through the 2x4, I'm drilling into the log itself. This gives me the opportunity to go parallel to the table, which is a uh, you know, sort of perpendicular to level. And now there's my steel rod. And uh, I do the same thing down the way. And uh, I pull the jig out now because it's kind of in the way to go deep. So once I, I've got my hole started, I can then go a little bit deeper. There you go, and I blow the air out. I blow the, the chips out. Again, blow the chips out and see how deep I am. Now here's that, that same exact piece of wood, and I'm using it to, to mark my holes on the wall at 40 inches high. And uh, the top of that jig is actually the same height as the surface of the shelf once it's in place. So that gives me a good guide. So I'm drilling into this uh, cinder block. It's extremely hard. So I go down to a smaller hole, which is a little bit easier. And then I, once I get that hole deep enough, I go to the bigger hole. So I'm removing a little bit of material in the center, then the material around the outside. And I'm going to epoxy those rods in place. I'm using just five-minute epoxy, and uh, I'm using West Systems microfiller. And I blow the holes out, get rid of all the dust in there. And I uh, scoop in the epoxy, and I want it to squish out. And there you see it squish out. I set a level on it, and then I put a stick on it with a clamp. So now that's going to dry level to the earth. And now I'm working on the other hole just down the way. Put the epoxy in. I want to feel it squish out. Clamp it at level. Let it dry. And now the other one's already starting to cure. Epoxy goes through a, a hardening phase where you can kind of carve it. So before it gets too hard, I can carve it with my knife. And that's what I'm doing there. Same thing on this side. I went and grabbed the beater chisel there, just it makes it a little bit easier to get in that corner. But again, epoxy goes through a curing phase. You want to get it right when it's at that curing phase. You don't want it to let it get too hard because then you really need to whack at it. Just painting that black just to make them a little bit more discreet because they're going to mostly be covered. And uh, I go to put the shelf on it and I realize those two things are kind of sprung a little left and right which actually is a good thing because it, it snugged onto the log. So I didn't need to do anything else to the log. It really snugged on there pretty good. So there we have a mantle, a natural live edge mantle on both sides. I even left the uh, chainsaw marks. And uh, my friend Kelly in Alaska made me that really cool license plate, Alaska Picker. Look them up on Instagram. And there's my aluminum axe. And there's a lamp I made many years ago. Half of the power goes directly through the steel of the wrench. So there it is, a live edge shelf made from cedar.